Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. I am so sorry it's been such a long time since I filmed a video, but I am hoping that I can become a more regular uploader again, so fingers crossed that I can stick to that. Today I thought I would show you just some books that I've been loving recently and some books that I think you should definitely be reading this year. I think the last video I made was about the books that you should be reading in the first half of 2016. So this video is sort of the books that you should be reading in the second half of 2016. Most of them are books that are already published. I believe there's just one that is still waiting to be published, but that comes out very soon. So I just thought I'd share with you some of the books that I have been loving and I hope that you enjoy this video. Um, as you can tell, I haven't made booktube videos in a while, so I'm really sorry if this is a crap video and I'm really rusty, but hopefully I'll get back into the swing of things. So to start off with, I'm gonna show you a book that I have been I think this is probably one of my most anticipated books ever in my entire life. I don't think I've ever been so excited for a book before. Um, the book is written by somebody that I know. I think I've been friends with her for about three or four years now on Twitter. We've never met in real life, but she's just such a lovely person that we've kind of got to know each other over the internet. And her, like, her dream was to be published. And I'm so excited to say that this is her dream it has become a reality and she is going to be published um she also she already had um some short ebooks out that were kind of bite-sized little um coffee break treats they were that was called the meat cute series published by harper impulse but this is her first like full-length novel her debut novel and it is called the sing-along society for singletons by katie katie love well, i don't know if you can see that is that clear i'm not sure but um, yeah, I'm so excited about this book because Katie is such a lovely person and she is such a brilliant writer as well. And I've been waiting for this book for so long. I've been patiently waiting for it. Um, and I finally got my hands on a copy. It comes out, I believe, in October. Um, I need to double check that, but I will leave a link below. You can go and pre-order it now. It's just 99p to pre-order. And it is such a brilliant book. I haven't actually finished it yet because I'm trying to savour it because I don't want it to ever end. Um, and I don't really want to say too much either because I, I don't want to spoil it, but the basic premise is a group of people who meet each week um, and they start to kind of discuss their problems and kind of find solutions to different um, challenges in their lives whilst watching musicals and enjoying musicals and singing along to musicals. And I just absolutely love it because musicals are a huge passion of mine and to finally find a book that focuses so heavily on them and includes lots of like... Um, lyrics and quotes and things that I can recognise. It's so lovely to have a book like that. And I was a little bit nervous reading it because I thought, oh God, if I don't like this book, then I'm going to be in trouble because I have to tell Katie the truth. I have to tell her. If I don't like it, I just have to tell her that it wasn't for me. So I was a little bit nervous starting it because I didn't want to hate it, but I am really happy to announce and to report that it is amazing. I'm loving it so, so much. And I don't want it to end, which is why I'm putting off finishing it. Um, I'm about halfway through now and I just love it. So that is definitely one of the books that you need to be pre-ordering this year. The second book that I have been loving, and again, which isn't one I've actually finished, I'm about probably just under halfway through, is The Regulars by Georgia Clark. Now this came out, I believe, on the 11th of August, or maybe, yeah, I think it was the 11th of August, so it's been out for a little while now. And this is... I don't really know what to call it, what the genre is, because it's it's like a contemporary women's fiction, but it's also got elements of like fantasy in it. Um, so I don't know what you'd kind of call that as a genre, but the basic idea of this book is a group of three girls who are what you would call regular, really. They have regular jobs. Um, well, I say they have regular jobs. They kind of, one of them wants to be a model and she's kind of struggling to get there. Um, and they basically just... Are existing in this world where they're not getting very far um, on their own kind of merit and their own steam um, and they're kind of really depressed and thinking oh god this is rubbish what is life kind of living in New York when we can't get anywhere um, and then one of the girls gets given this magic potion called pretty and it promises to make you beautiful and I think um, I think if you take pretty it lasts for a week so you have a week of being completely beautiful and then you just revert to your old self so the girls decide that they want to try this new potion because they just want to f know what it's like to feel pretty so the three girls take this potion and overnight they become these gorgeous glamorous kind of supermodel-esque women and suddenly they find that they're getting the jobs that they want they're getting to asked on dates they're having like this amazing life just because of the way that they look um, 
and I just love how much of a fantastic social commentary this book is. It sort of completely explores the idea of you know what what makes a person pretty is it their outside the way that they look or is it more about the person that you are inside and the traits that you have and how kind you are and things like that and it's just a really good book it's very funny as well um and it's one of those books that you kind of you it, you, it leaves you with a lot of thoughts and questions afterwards because i kept keep thinking to myself as i read this would i take pretty if it existed would i want to take it and i honestly don't know whether i would because I don't, I don't know whether it would be um, the sort of thing that you would ever recover from, if that makes sense, if you were to spend a week being completely beautiful and then the next week you revert back to your regular self, would you ever, you know, you might not ever feel good enough again. So it's a really interesting novel and I highly recommend this. And like I say, it's already out, so definitely go and get yourself a copy. Um, and that is The Regulars by Georgia Clark. The next book that I have been reading, and again, I'm only about like 100 pages into this, so it might go completely downhill, but for now, I am absolutely loving it. And it is The Fireman by Joe Hill. Now, I borrowed this book from the library because, as you can see, it is an absolute beast. I think it's about 800 pages long. And I saw it on um, Amazon, I think it was about £13. Um, and I thought I didn't want to spend £13 on an author that I'd never read before because this is the first book by Joe Hill that I've ever read. The only reason why I picked it up is because of the blurb, it just sounded amazing and I was really intrigued to read it. Um, but as I've never read any Joe Hill before, I wasn't willing to kind of spend £13 on a book and an author that I might not enjoy, but so far I am loving this. The basic premise behind The Fireman is that the world, or especially um, New York and America, have they've got this um, spore which they've nicknamed Dragon Scale. And when you are infected by it, your skin becomes sort of, um, you get like scales and little golden threads through your skin. Um, but the ultimate um, kind of thing that Dragon Scale does to you is it sets you on fire. So lots of people are just burning to death because of this spore that has been found. Um, and the story follows a woman called Harper, who was a school nurse, but then when dragon scale kind of hits full force she ends up volunteering in a hospital um and she kind of has all of these protective clothes protective clothes on so she doesn't catch the dragon scale but then a couple of months later when she's at home um she finds that she's got the dragon scale but she also realizes that she's pregnant and this book sort of follows her journey on working out whether she keeps the baby whether like whether she can keep the baby because she's is she gonna die um, and then she meets this man called the fireman who has the dragon scale but he has worked out how to control the fire within him so he can use the fire for good but then he can stop himself from burning to death and I've just got to the part where they meet so I'm really really excited to see where this goes and I just love I just love the idea so much this is kind of I guess like a fantasy dystopian book um, so I'm really really excited to see how this continues and I am pretty sure that I'm going to love this so if you love anything that's kind of a bit dystopian or apocalyptic then this is the book for you the next book that I have got or the next book that I read um, this was one that I read I don't know if I've shown you this one before I might have shown you this already but if not I'm going to show you again um, and it is The Secret of Orchard Cottage by Alex Brown. I just think this cover is absolutely beautiful. Um, Alex Brown is an author that I have loved for ages. Ever since her Carrington series, I have been in love with her books. Um, and this is her latest novel, which I think is still just 99p on Kindle at the moment. So definitely, definitely go and check this out because you will not be disappointed. I absolutely love this book. It tells the story of a woman called April who has lost her husband and she goes back to the little village of Tyndaldale which is actually where um, a couple of Alex's other books have been set it's in the same sort of similar village um, and she goes back to um, her great aunt Edie to help her um, for a little while while she's kind of recovering from the death of her husband but when she gets there she finds that aunt Edie is perhaps not as well as she pretends she is and it kind of follows the story of April and what happens when she's in the village of Tyndaldale and how her life sort of irrevocably changes um, over the course of kind of these few months that she's away and I just absolutely adored this book it was probably my favourite Alex Brown book to date because not only is it um, quite contemporary and kind of full of the like the happiness and positivity that you would expect from a contemporary women's fiction novel it is also very deep and explores um, 
a lot of things that I wouldn't normally expect a novel like this to explore. It looks at um, women in the in the war, it looks at um, dementia and things like that and it really does it with great empathy and honesty as well which I really enjoyed. So if you like Alex Brown's books then definitely read this one and if you haven't read any of hers before then this is a great place to start and even though it is part of like a, the Tyndale series you don't have to have had you don't have to have read any of those already to be able to read this because this just sort of reads as a standalone so definitely pick, check this book out if you love women's fiction. The next book I've got is probably, uh, this is a bold claim to make but I think it is my most favourite thriller of 2016 I think. Um, if not my favourite, it's definitely in my top three of my favourite thrillers of the year and it is The Couple Next Door by Sherry Lapina. I'm sorry if I've said your name wrong. Um, but this is basically the book of the year for me, I think. I don't, I don't know, it's really hard because I've read so many good books but this one always stands out to me as being amazing. Um, I actually passed it on to my mum to read and then my, I passed it on to my nan and they both loved it as well so it's not just me who thought this was really good. Um, this book kind of plays on the biggest fear of any parent I think and even though I'm not a parent I still found it very emotional and I became very invested in the story. It begins on an evening where this couple are getting ready to go to their neighbours for dinner and the babysitter cancels at the last minute and the mother says let's not bother going we don't have a babysitter we can't leave our baby here on her own but then the dad says it's okay we're only going next door let's take the baby monitor with us let's go back and check on her every half an hour she'll be absolutely fine um, and the mum relents because she's kind of she doesn't want to seem like she's boring and she kind of doesn't want to come across as uh, you know she's kind of very bothered about what other people think of her so she's like okay let's go next door and as the evening wears on they keep going back to check on their daughter and she's absolutely fine um and then kind of it becomes very tense next door because the mum is finding that her husband is flirting with the the woman next door and she's kind of getting very tense so she decides to leave at one o'clock in the morning and go back home to her daughter but when she goes back home her daughter is gone and the book then follows what happens after this child has gone missing and the search to find her and it gets very very it's I can't even I don't want to say anything to describe it because I'm going to ruin it um so I'm just going to leave it at that and then hopefully that is enough to entice you to pick it up but um it is such a good book it's so compelling it's got a fantastic pace to it it's one of those books that you think you know what's happened but then something else is thrown into the mix and you're like okay I've got no idea what's happening now and um, I think one of the reasons why I found this also so compelling and quite um I don't know what the word is but I think I found it quite haunting is because it had sort of I think anybody who reads this book will draw parallels with cases like Madeleine McCann where parents leave their child on their own thinking that they're going to be fine and come back and find that the child is gone um and I think that's just such um, a haunting yet intriguing position to be in because you know how does a child just disappear is some, has someone taken them have they gone on their own why would somebody want to take a child etc etc so it's a really interesting book that ex kind of explores all of those areas um, and this came out on the 14th of July so I believe it's still only in hardback but you can get it on a kindle as well and always you can always borrow books from the library too so definitely go and buy this or read it or borrow it if you love thrillers because I promise you you will not be disappointed. The next book I want to show you kind of goes against what I just said because this potentially could be my favourite thriller of the year so far which is really annoying because I just can't work out whether I liked one more than the other or whether they're both the same or or what, I don't know, but this is another thriller that I've loved and it is one of my most anticipated books of the year as well and it is I See by Claire McIntosh. Now this, I wasn't actually going to be getting a copy of this, I was just going to borrow it from the library, but my lovely friend Jenny, for my birthday, she bought me a special edition copy from Goldsboro Books which has these beautiful sprayed yellow edges and inside, oh, I actually, a couple of months ago, I won a competition on Twitter because Claire was giving away these exclusive one, I think it was like the first chapter exclusive sampler of her book and she actually, I actually won a signed little copy of the first chapter. So I read the first chapter I think in like May I think it was, so I was so desperate to like read more. Um, 
and like I say my lovely friend Jenny got this book for me from Goldsburg Books and I was so excited to have it anyway but the fact that it is also uh, a numbered and signed limited edition copy just made my life um, and I'm s I was just so excited to have this so thank you so much Jenny you are amazing um, so I was really anticipating this and I was really excited but I also had the fear that this would not be as good as Claire's debut novel which if you haven't read it yet where have you been it's called I let you go and it is just out of this world incredible so when I saw I see you I was like okay please let this be as good as the first one if not better and I'm proud proud that's the wrong word happy happy to say that it is I think I say it is as good I don't think it's better I think it's probably on the same par um, but yeah it's just such a good book and I don't want to say too much again because I'm always wearing I'm gonna potentially spoil it but it is about a woman who um, travels home on the tube one evening and she's flicking through the paper just absent-mindedly and she finally gets kind of to the back of the section where there's adverts and things and she sees a picture of her face um, and she's kind of really confused and quite panicked because she doesn't know why her picture is in the paper, who's taken the picture, um, she's kind of a bit confused about what's happened so she goes home and she says to her family you know, I'm a bit worried about this, and they say, oh, don't, you know, don't worry, you're being silly, it doesn't matter. Um, it's probably not you, it's probably just someone who looks like you. But then she starts to see that other women are appearing, and things keep happening to these women after they've been in the paper. Some of them are attacked, some of them are killed, and she starts to really worry for her own safety. And it follows her on this kind of quest to discover what these pictures are doing there and why they're in there. Um, and it is just so good. Um, and yeah, I just cannot recommend this enough. So if you enjoyed her first novel, then you will definitely enjoy this. And if you haven't read her first novel, then read this anyway, and then go back and read her first, because they are both incredible psychological thrillers. So that is I See You. And then the final book that I wanted to show you is a book that potentially won't appeal to many people at all, but it is one of my most anticipated books of my life, I think it's fair to say. Um, and when I got this book, I was just like over the moon about it. Um, it is, ugh, she says, trying to pick it up, The Hamilton. Oh my goodness me, guys, I cannot tell you how in love with this book I am. It is a kind of bind up of everything to do with the Hamilton musical. If you don't know um, about Hamilton, um, the amazing Lynn Manuel Miranda has written a musical all about Hamilton. Um, but he's told his story through rap and um, it is just like it, it, it sounds on the surface like it would just wouldn't work and it would be like the worst thing you've ever heard in your life but oh my god it works it works so well it's unbelievable and I've been obsessed with the soundtrack since I downloaded it a couple of months ago and I haven't actually seen it because it is only in America on Broadway at the moment but um, I believe it is coming to London so I really hope when it comes to London I will be able to go and see it but they bought out this book called it's called Hamilton the Revolution but I I think I am not sure the people call it a Hamil tome haha <laughs> punny um, and this is basically a book that's filled full to the brim with notes about the play um, lots and lots of um, information about like the writing process, why Lynn chose to do certain things, why it's staged in a certain way, why certain actors were chosen for the certain parts um, and I also love the fact that it's got a deckled edge as well, I don't know if you can see that but it's such a gorgeous deckled edge so it, I just screamed when this came through the post and it is just the most gorgeous book I have ever had the pleasure of owning. Um, it's just beautiful and I think one of my favourite parts um, <laughs> This is probably going to sound really weird if you don't love Hamilton or you've never heard of Hamilton so you might just want to stop listening right now but the bit where in the in the front the dedication where it says this book is dedicated to Sebastian and Sloane who will come of age with our young nation which just it brought a tear to my eye basically um but yeah it's just full of um information about the show and also it is it has lots it has every song in the book as lyrics written down but it also with every song there's footnotes and down the edge Lynn has written notes about different lyrics so about maybe why he chose them what the lyrics actually mean um, whether 
you know, they're his favourite lyrics, or whether they're his wife's favourite lyrics, or anything like that. And it's just beautiful, and it's full of these amazing photos of the production. Um, and it's also full of um, things that you wouldn't really know unless you had, like, read this book. You wouldn't really have that knowledge if you went to see it. So I think it makes it even... Like, if I was to see it, I would appreciate it even more because I've read this book. Um, and this isn't actually out until October in the UK, but Waterstones were selling early copies, so I don't actually know if they have any left. Um, but this is... Um, I've managed to get a copy um, from Waterstones when they had some left. So if you are desperate to get your hands on this, then I definitely recommend going and checking their website out, or potentially going into your local branch and asking if they have any copies. Um, because if not, you may have to wait until October. But oh my god, I just... Like, even now I'm just getting distracted because there's just so many amazing pictures and beautiful things in here that I just... Oh, I love it. So yeah, that is the Hamilton, and it, I managed to get it for £24.99 from Waterstones. The RRP is £30, but I'm pretty sure that most places like Amazon um, and Wordery and places like that will probably sell it for about £25 as well. So that is the Hamilton, and probably my most favourite book I have ever owned. So that is it, that concludes my kind of books that I've been loving recently and books that you should be reading in the latter half of 2016. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'm sorry if it seemed a bit random and I'm a bit rubbish but hopefully I will make some more and I will get back or I will get back, I will get used to making videos again. Um, so thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again very soon. Bye!